concession stand. Live from Stadium Field on the campus of Darien High School, it's Varsity Boys Lacrosse on the DAF Media Network. Tonight, we've got a good one. It's the Darien Blue Wave and the Manhasset Indians in the annual Battle of the Sound rivalry game. Hi, everybody. Damian Andrew on the DAF Media Network. So glad you could be with us. Joining me on the broadcast tonight, 
Jay Robbins from Darien and Frank Coglin from Manhasset. In fact, in fact, Frank is the voice of Manhasset Athletics. Welcome in, gentlemen. We should have an interesting game tonight, a great rivalry game that goes back to 1996. These two teams have met every year, and it's a special out-of-state, out-of-conference rivalry against two of the real perennial powers in the tri-state area. Darianne comes into this game undefeated, 4-0. and Manhasset off to a 2-3 and three start. And, Frank, you can speak to their uh, strength of schedule. Yeah. Obviously, Coach Cromwell, Keith Cromwell, the head coach of the Manhasset Indians, uh, he doesn't schedule any cupcakes in the early season slate. Yes, that's right. The, the non-conference schedule here for both of these teams prepares them for conference play. And, and Manhasset has... Uh, taken on uh, both the, will have on its non-conference agenda the, the Catholic teams, uh, St. Anthony's and Chamonix of the powerhouses together with uh, some strong teams like Darianne, John Jay, and Syosset, Massapequa, and Cold Spring Harbor. All right, we are just about ready to go at the face-off X is Tanner Strube and Mark Silos of Manhasset. And we are underway here as Silas controls the faceoff, and Manhasset will go to work on offense right away. Thank you so much for joining us on this DAF Media broadcast. To all of you on Long Island, in Manhasset, or wherever you are, thanks for tuning in. We've got some great varsity boys lacrosse action for you this afternoon from Stadium Field here on the campus of Darien High School. Damian Andrew, Jay Robbins, Frank Coglin joining you. So glad you are joining us for this one. Chris Glenn on the move, and he finds the back of the net as Manhasset strikes first. 11.06 left in the first quarter. Again, we apologize. We do not have our score clock working for you this afternoon, so I will update you on the time as we move throughout this broadcast. But Chris Glenn moving to his left, did a terrific job, finds the back of the net, hard shot with the left hand. That's a tough shot for, uh, for the goalie. He kind of handcuffed him there, went low, and just got squeezed it right in. So Glenn, number 44, the junior midi, who's headed to Georgetown, puts the Manhasset Indians on the scoreboard first. And it's Silos and Tanner Strube at the face-off X. And we've got a ground ball here, and it's scooped up by Blake Somi. And Darian turns it over. The Indians go back to work on offense. Obviously, Jay, possession, time of possession, important in a rivalry game like this. It's, a, it's definitely a key. It was short stick Mitty Totora who had that interception on the ride from Manhasset. When I talked to uh, Manhasset head coach Keith Cromwell earlier in the week, obviously his guys were up for this game as that shot uh, sails over the crossbar. Manhasset retains possession. And Frank, as you know, Coach Cromwell, he comes with quite a resume. His second season as the head coach of the Manhasset uh, Indians has been on the staff as an assistant prior to that, has coached in the college ranks at Yale and the University of New Haven. So he is familiar with Southwestern and, Connecticut. And, and also at Rutgers. And he was a, a player as well in indoor and outdoor professional leagues. And he comes from Manhasset, to Manhasset. This is his second year uh, at the helm after having an undefeated season, regular season at Locust Valley. That last shot was by Louis Perfetto. Here's Manhattan, Manhasset, Chris Meyer. Comes from behind the cage, and a nice stop by Sean Collins. 
And here comes Darianne across midfield as they look to attack now on offense. Their first offensive possession of the game. Logan McGovern, he controls that uh, X behind the cage, Jay Robbins. Such a terrific player, high school All-American, the senior attack from Darianne. He's a great uh, attackman, he's got great vision, find open people, and uh, he draws a lot of attention. And the nice save there by Grant Petraka. Petraka, Frank, uh, also plays football for Manhasset in the fall. Terrific football player as well as being the starting goalie for the Indians. And yes. here comes Darianne on the turnover. It's McGovern streaking to the cage. Bounce shot is wide of the far post. Yes, Grant is a steady, consistent performer between the pipes. And he's one of the four captains, one of the three senior captains at Manhasset for Manhasset. Minicus gets off a shot. This is a Darianne team that comes in undefeated, 4-0, nationally ranked. Manhasset 2-3 against a loaded schedule, although coming off a big win over Syosset. As the Blue Wave looking for seams here in the Manhasset defense. Hudson Picorni, the junior attack with the ball, swings it to McGovern. And here's Minicus, and he finds the back of the cage. So McGovern to Minicus. Minicus, nice dodge there, gets free, gets the shot off. He had a short stick uh, on him playing defense. I'm not sure if that was uh, something that, that happened from a slider previously, but um, that's going to be tough to cover uh, Minicus with a short stick. Minicus playing back at his natural position. Played a lot of midi the last two seasons, but uh, with the graduation of Kevin Lindley, Minicus slides into the attack position, and uh, Coach Braymeyer, Darianne head coach Jeff Braymeyer, he told me before the season started, really, that's his natural position. Attack for Brian Minicus. We are live on the DAF Media Network, a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. And Darien goes back to work on offense. Hey everybody, Tommy Hellman swings it to Jackson Peters. We've got a great crowd this afternoon, a windy day here in Darien, Connecticut. Here's McGovern behind the cage. Tommy Hellman brings it out as Darianne resets. 6.53 remaining in the first quarter here from Stadium Field. And the shot is good as Ryan Darby, Ryan the junior Darby. midi, rings one up, and we are going to take another look at this shot by Darby. The nice feed from Minicus to Darby, and he just lets it rip. That was, Jay just, a, that was just a ripping shot uh, from from outside. It wasn't. Uh, it was. It was. It was a nice pass, a nice shot, and that was a tough for save. And we're going to say see it again from our uh, cross. Bar camera stick side high. Uh, that's a that's a that's a really tough shot to perform. Great work, guys. So it's Strube and Silos back at the faceoff X, two to one, Darian. As the Blue Wave takes the lead with two unanswered goals. Balls on the ground and Silos comes up with it. He takes it across midfield. The sophomore faceoff specialist. Aiden Mull, Holland, the freshman midi. Switch. 
And Manhasset goes back to work on offense. Mulholland on the far side of the field. You know, Jay, we talk so much about uh, Darianne on offense, but uh, Coach Braymeyer Meyer, such a defensive-minded coach. I mean, he knows the game in and out, but uh, defensively, his teams in years past so so strong on defense. Yes, um, you know, when I was in high school, he, he was the defensive football coach and did an amazing job with us there. So I could see his defensive-mindedness coming through in lacrosse as well. Coach Braymeyer, of course, really started this program, the only uh, yeah. coach that the Darianne Blue Wave varsity lacrosse program has ever known, has done a uh, terrific job in his 30 plus years on the sideline coaching the Blue Wave. Also, uh, as you mentioned, was a football coach, coached a little swimming, mm -hmm. played baseball in college. Yep. And he has built uh, quite a program here in Darianne. Manhasset in the orange jerseys moving from right to left. Darianne in the home whites moving from left to right. Here's Perfetto up top. That's Aiden Mulholland. Or Aiden Mulholland, excuse me. Now Perfetto behind the cage. As Manhasset sets up his, its offense. There's Mo Chris Glenn with the ball. There's Chris Glenn who scored the first goal of the game. Frank, obviously, this is a Manhasset team. Story tradition has had a lot of success through the years. Off to a two and three start, but a lot of young players on this team as they're kind of feeling things out early on here. Yes, uh, Aiden Mulholland. At uh, the midfield position is, is only a freshman. He is the number one midfielder. And uh, also, Louis Profetto's play has really improved uh, attack, uh, giving more options to the offense. So they are still developing a cohesion, uh, but it's, it's a good group. When I spoke to Coach Cromwell the other day, he said he was looking forward to coming up here to Southwestern Connecticut, respects this program, has a lot of respect for Coach uh, Bray Meyer, and two great te uh, teams with storied traditions. As Manhasset turns it over, here comes Darianne. Somi, the shot is stopped by Petraka. Chris Glenn's improved play and his increase in scoring from last year has also provided uh, yet another option for the, the Mahasset offense. He, he likes his left as he showed with the goal that he scored earlier. 325 remaining in the first quarter. Darianne with a 2-1 lead here at Stadium Field. We are live on the DAF Media Network. Damian Andrew, Jay Robbins, and Frank Cogman joining you for this broadcast frank we appreciate you coming all the way up here from manhasset i know you had a game to announce uh, earlier this afternoon thanks so much for making the trip thanks for having me my pleasure and that was jake tamaris as the ball rolls across the end line Manhasset retains possession, 2.45 remaining in the first quarter. Perfetto over to Logan Hyde. Logan Hyde, a big-time soccer player, Frank, in the fall. Yes, and, and also he wears number 32, which is a jersey given to a senior for uh, leadership and uh, Logan, uh, it's a well-deserved honor for him. Uh, he's a steady, consistent performer, and it's... And that is a goal for Manhasset. And... 
It was 32. Hyde. And that was Logan Hyde. Uh, as we were talking about him. And, and that number is Johnny Driscoll's number. And in honor of the great midfielder from Manhasset. Number 38, Mike Farrell. That was a nice shot. I'm not and sure it, if that was 38. It 32. was 38. 38. It was uh, Mike, Michael Farrell who actually scored, not Logan High, but you were talking about number 32 and the significance of that jersey for Manhasset, Frank. Yes. Uh, John Driscoll wore that when he was at Manhasset, uh, where uh, he was an All-American and a, an MVP of the Nassau County playoffs in consecutive years. And then he went on to the University of Virginia, where he also was an All-American and National Midfielder of the Year. Wow. And uh, unfortunately, he was taken too soon. He was a, a classmate of, of a brother of mine, and uh, it uh, was a tough loss. So in honor of John and his grit and determination, uh, number 32 is a senior honor that, that Logan deserves and was awarded, and uh, it's, it's a great Manhasset tradition. Coach Cromwell, when I spoke to him, he uh, brought that up right away in the significance of uh, jersey number 32 at Manhasset. So we've got a good one here late in the first quarter, tied it to a minute 20 remaining. Manhasset Darien. Long-time rivals, a rivalry dating back to the mid-1990s. Wow. Bounce shot is stopped by Sean Collins. Glenn was the shooter. So Glenn has been all over the field for Manhasset. And Chris Meyer scoops up the ground ball. Here's Aiden Mulholland, the freshman Mitty, who was already verbal to the University of Michigan, Frank. Yes, he committed uh, in eighth grade uh, before <laughs> the change in the commitment rule to yep. September 1 of junior year. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, the Wolverines have a good one in, in Aiden Mulholland. And again, we want to apologize. No clock on our broadcast this afternoon. Time running out here in the first quarter. Under 10 seconds remaining as Manhasset looks to get off a shot here. With time running out, that sails wide of the far post. And that will just about do it. 0.2 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Tied at two. And that will do it for the first quarter, tied at two between these two rivals. We certainly have a good one this afternoon on a windy day, Jay Robbins, mm -hmm. from uh, Stadium Field here in Darien. You mentioned possession was going to be key, and, and it obviously will be. We've seen both teams be able to you know, control the offense and get good shots and, and score. And uh, you know, possession is going to be key, and we've seen the faceoffs go back and forth a little bit, so that's going to be a key battle to watch is the, the faceoff. Coming into this game, Coach Cromwell told me that managing the ball and, and, and getting the best opportunities possible, really a big key coming into this game against Darien take advantage of opportunities they certainly have done that manage the ball better they have done that I, I think they've demonstrated that Manhasset has demonstrated that they can create separation they've had a number of different players that have had really good looks I have to put it on cage uh, and uh, keep doing what they're doing I, I think that a, a game that is just two goals per quarter uh, is is probably in Manhasset's favor uh, and if Silos continues to basically take the Darien midfielder uh, to a draw as it relates to face-off wins, that's where Manhasset wants to be. Yep, it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tight one for sure. We are just about ready to start the second quarter here. We are live on the DAF Media Network. So glad you could be with us. Thanks to all of you tuning in from Manhasset to watch this game. Obviously, this Manhasset program, a, a great program, story tradition. And the Darien 
So Darian finished finished that first quarter playing a lot of defense, um, and you know Darian lives and can sometimes die by by transition. Uh, when it's there and you have it, it's a good time to go. Um, when you don't get it to go through and you back on defense again but from pushing it too hard, uh, that can sometimes hurt you. So this would be a good battle here. We are just about ready to start the second quarter here. Tanner Strube, Mark Silos, and we've got uh, motion there. Yep. I mean, you know, it's, it's a big game. It's a big face-off, and, you know, sometimes the nerves can get to you. Happens all the time to the best of us. So Darian has possession as they go to work on offense. There's Jack Joyce near midfield. Gets it to Minicus. Back to Joyce. And Minhasset extending their defense. Joyce McGovern the shot. That's and Minhasset comes away with it. That's Eddie Arnold with the ground ball and the clear from Minhasset. I think he blocked the shot as well. That was a great play. Arnold, he takes a shot, and the save made by Collins. Sean Collins, Jay, obviously, as you know, first year starting in goal as a senior. Big season for him, big moment for him. Yep, he's responded pretty well. Uh, um, obviously, the Yorktown game and um, the Torrey Pides game came up huge, and uh, he's, really, he's really filling that, uh, that, that hole that was left by uh, the goalie leaving last year. We've got a timeout here, a little break in the action. You're talking about that Yorktown game. Darian beat Yorktown 13-11, came out on fire to open up the second half, and then Yorktown came out on fire in the fourth quarter, ended up being a really great game, two-goal game. Darianne holds on to win 13-11. to That was at Yorktown. Then, of course, Darian beat West Hill beat Torrey Pines, one of the top teams on the West Coast uh, last week here at Stadium Field, 14-4, and then coming off a 17-2 win over Ludlow, and of course this a big, as we've mentioned throughout this broadcast, a big non-conference out-of-state rivalry game between these two teams. Well, whenever there's two teams playing across the pond, so to speak, uh, uh, well, you know, different states, you, the records you can kind of throw out the window, because I think both sides are going to come in a little, a little extra to try to uh, do well out there for their for their hometown, their state, and uh, and really put it all on the line. You mentioned the Yorktown game, and that was definitely a game of swings and momentum, and that happens a lot in the sport of lacrosse. Uh, you can get a couple goals in there and get some momentum behind you, and really start start to uh, move the needle. No, absolutely. So Frank, after this. Uh out of conference game against Darianne, Manhasset will start to get into their conference schedule, which is never easy as well. Obviously, we all know the great lacrosse tradition on Long Island. Yes, that's that's true, and and it includes games against uh, Garden City, uh, which is the Woodstick Classic, which this year is uh, at Garden City. Always a tremendous rivalry, the one of the, the longest running. A high school lacrosse matchup uh, in the country, uh, and uh, op opposition such as uh, Southside High School of Rockville Center. So it, 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 these games prepare these teams well for for the conference play. So ten minutes remaining in the second quarter. We are tied at two here, live from Stadium Field. The shot, and that rolls across the end line as Manhasset will retain possession. That was a great look, way to get his hands free and get a good shot. That was Aiden Mulholland uh, shooting out of the roll dodge. This is Mulholland inverted, drawing a short stick. Mulholland being guarded by Somi. Mulholland, just a freshman, the Mitty 
from Manhasset. Devin Kennedy, number 16. Here's Glenn from behind the cage. Gets back up. And Manhasset goes back to work on offense. Perfetto. Far side of the field. Here's Glenn. It's a warding call. It's a warding call. Chris Glenn, by the way, the junior midfielder from Manhasset, is headed to Georgetown. He's committed to play for the Hoyas. Here's Hudson Bacorny, swings it to Logan McGovern behind the net over to Minicus on the far side of the field. Ed Arnold has the assignment of McGovern, and he typically draws the toughest attackman for the opponents. He's an excellent on-ball defender and a ground ball and transition player, as you saw on that clear from earlier in the game. McGovern looking for Minicus, had it, but uh, couldn't control it. Here's McGovern. And the ball rolls out of bounds. Stays with Darianne. McGovern on the far side of the field. That's a great check. Check by Arnold. And Arnold doing his job on that play there, that sequence. Here comes Manhasset across midfield. Ground ball and clear there by Ross Totora. And short stick D midi. Logan Hyde behind the cage. Mike Farrell swings it over to Peter Lapina. Good ball movement here from Manhasset, Jay. Yes, they're definitely moving the ball well, um, getting getting great shots, great opportunities on the on net, and um, they keep that up. It's going to be good things for them. This is a Manhasset team that certainly knows all about what Darianne has done over the last uh, few seasons. And uh, they are ready to go. They are ready to play the Blue Wave. Coach Cromwell told me they were really looking forward to coming up here. And they're showing it right now. Tied at 2, 640 remaining in the second quarter. The shot. Peter Lapina. Peter Lapina. Lefty runner. That was wide. Perfetto. Jake Tamaris up top and to Lapina. Down to Logan Hyde and Perfetto behind the cage. We talked about uh, Manhasset head coach Keith Cromwell at the outset of our broadcast. Was an All-American, of course, at Rutgers. That shot is wide. And Manhasset retains possession. But to Coach Cromwell, uh, what a career he put together at Rutgers. And then, of course, drafted into the MLL. Was the uh, MLL Rookie of the Year, Frank. Yes. Yes, played he, for the Bridgeport Barrage. So, as I mentioned, coached in Connecticut, also played professionally in Connecticut. The Barrage, now defunct, it's the Philadelphia Barrage. Yeah, there's, there's no question about Coach Conwell's uh, lacrosse IQ, and he has the experience that you need to have to run lacrosse operations at Manhasset. Glenn with the ball on the far side of the field. Here's Perfetto as he sets up behind the cage. Curls in front, shot, stopped by Collins. Great save on that one. That was a good look. 
Jay, what makes him effective between the pipes, Sean Collins? Um, that's a great question. Um, you know, goalies are, you know, have been known to be a different breed out there. You're really throwing yourself in front of something that's going to probably hurt every time it's thrown at you. So, um, I don't know. I guess you have to be, be ready to commit fully to stopping that ball every time it comes at you. And obviously, being able to move quickly helps. Have a quick reaction time, good vision, and seeing the ball coming out of the stick. Here's, and getting yourself in the right position. Absolutely. <laughs> Here's Glenn. The shot, another stop by Collins. Maholland again as the shooter. So Sean Collins with a couple of nice saves on yep. uh, that offensive possession by Manhasset. A couple of saves that you know you don't really expect of goalies to make when they're on the doorstep like that. Um, you know, those are you know those are great saves, and uh, he's in the right place at the right time. But you wouldn't blame him if they did go in. You know. Here's Hudson Picorni. Gets it to Henry Feifel. Henry Feifel, of course, played on that Darianne Blue Wave ice hockey team over the winter. And here's McGovern, number four, so quick. Back to Feifel. Feifel gets off a shot and he bounces it in. Henry Feifel with a nice move. The junior midi gives Darianne the 3 2 lead with 3.27 remaining in the second quarter. Pretty move that time, Jay, by Feifel. Comes from behind the cage as we take another look at this. I think you see a lot of attention focused on. On the on the attack, Min Logan and uh, Minicus, and uh, when you you know when you have a lot of attention focusing on sliding to those guys, sometimes the other guys can you know can not get the right kind of double when they do beat their own, their men. So it's Silos and Strub had a chance to talk to Tanner Strub couple hours before the game he was all alone out here on the field listening to some music getting psyched up obviously as uh, we have a time out here the face-off specialist such an important position in lacrosse it really is and uh, you know you can you, you can be a very lonely position as well um, yeah um, when things are going well you're the hero and uh, sometimes you you do uh, run up against a guy who's having a better day than you and you know, uh, you just have to you know, gut it out and uh, fight through that. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens here. Silas is showing his quick hands and ability to win these face-offs despite being overmatched physically. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more second-quarter action. Come sail away with the Darianne Foundation at their 20th year celebration and fundraiser, an evening of Yacht Rock on Saturday, April 28th at 6.30 p.m. at the Tokeny Club. This fabulous gala will feature yacht drinks and a dinner of gourmet food stations. There will also be dancing to America's number one Yacht Rock tribute band, Three Sheets to the Wind. The seaside setting and gorgeous water views at the Tokeny Club make this the perfect way to get a jump on summer. Since 1998, the Darianne Foundation has awarded more than $4 million in grants to emergency responders, public schools, and nonprofits in Darianne. For more information and to buy tickets to our Evening of Yacht Rock on April 28th, go to Dar We are back on the DAF Media Network live. Three minutes remaining in the second quarter. Want to apologize again for not having a score clock for you, or having a clock for you, I should say. We certainly have the score for you, and it's a good one. 3-2. Darianne in front. As Manhasset looks to score the equalizer here. And they have 
if nothing else, Frank Coughlin had been patient on offense. Yes, yes. And the, the, these players are all products of the Manhasset PAL, so the, the lacrosse skill is, is there. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of, of what, as you say, the patience and creating opportunities and then executing. And I really like the diversity of sources for goals that they have. And there have been plenty of shots. And that was a great play. And that is a goal for Manhasset as... Perfetto fed Alcarez at the crease. Chris Alcarez, the junior, uh, at the doorstep with the goal. And he ties it up at three with 2-11 remaining in the first half. It seemed that we had a cross creed slice, slide from the defenseman and the Ten. midi. Midi needs to come down the backside, top side. Midi needs to come down and, and, and get on that guy at the bottom. Great angle there. Great job, guys, as we are back at the uh, face-off X. 2-11 remaining in the half. Tied at three as Alcarez, number 10 for Manhasset, scores the equalizer. Strube and Silos having a good battle there at the face-off X, and it's Silos again with possession. Silos, and he scores. Don't call him a Fogo, right? Call no. him a face-off specialist. As, That's uh, he no. Wins the face-off and takes it down and scores, puts it in the back of the net. And Manhasset regains the lead as this one has been back and forth. We have got a good one here from Stadium Field and Darianne between two traditional powers. Mark Silas split two doubles to get that goal. Demonstrated it was a his, triple. <laughs> maybe maybe three, three doubles. Uh, and his skill dexterity uh, all the way practically to the crease. He would not be denied. This is a Darien team that owns the nation's longest winning streak, 58 games. And they have their hands full this afternoon with Manhasset. Darianne has won the last four matchups in this rivalry. They beat Manhasset last year 12 to 8 on Long Island. Yeah. And we've got a flag down. Cromwell thought that there should have been slash calls on some of the earlier faceoffs wins by Silos, but that one uh, was pretty clear. And it gives a one-minute extra man opportunity to the Indians. Yeah, anytime you bring your stick up over your head, come down on the guy, especially more than once, uh, they're, they're usually going to call something on that. So a man-up situation here for the Manhasset Indians as they look to extend their lead a minute 40 remaining in the half. You are watching the DAF Media Network, a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. Good ball movement here from Manhasset. The shot off is the pipe. off the pipe. Feed to Perfetto was a good look off of the man up. And that is a uh, Darien turnover. James Amersano with the bouncing ground ball. And here comes Manhasset. And they are in no hurry with 45 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Here's Glenn up top. We're all even now. The penalty's over. Resets the Manhasset offense here. Looks like they'll be, well, I don't know. They're going to get a shot off They're going to get Jay. the last one, yeah. They're going to they're gonna be very patient. But they're going to run some clock here. 4-3, Manhasset. Time running out in the second quarter. Under six 
seconds left. They got to hurry. The left-handed shot uh, bounces wide of the cage. 0.5 seconds remaining as Manhasset clings to a 4-3 lead. And that'll do it for the first half. Manhasset up 4-3 on the Darianne Blue Wave. We are going to take a quick break, reset, and we will be back with more lacrosse here on the DAF Media Network. Come sail away with the Darianne Foundation at their 20th year celebration and fundraiser, an evening of Yacht Rock on Saturday, April 28th at 6.30 p.m. at the Tokeny Club. This fabulous gala will feature yacht drinks and a dinner of gourmet food stations. There will also be dancing to America's number one Yacht Rock tribute band, Three Sheets to the Wind. The seaside setting and gorgeous water views at the Token Eat Club make this the perfect way to get a jump on summer. Since 1998, the Darianne Foundation has awarded more than $4 million in grants to emergency responders, public schools, and nonprofits in Darianne. For more information and to buy tickets to our Evening of Yacht Rock on April 28th, go to DarianneFoundation.org. We are back on the DAF Media Network at the half, a terrific high school varsity boys lacrosse game between Darian and Manhasset. The Manhasset Indians from Long Island up four to three at the half. And you just saw our promo of the annual spring gala for the Darian Foundation. Joining me right now at the half is the executive director of the Darianne Foundation, Sarah Woodbury. So glad uh, you could be with us on the DAF Media Network. And uh, obviously, uh, you and I haven't had a chance, we've exchanged a lot of emails, haven't had a chance <laughs> to really talk because you have been just in overdrive as you get ready for this spring gala. Hard to believe the Darianne Foundation's been around for 20 years. 20 years, exactly. Well, first of all, I have to say it's so exciting to be here in the control booth watching everything going on with DAF <laughs> Media. But yes, we are in um, full court press trying to get ready for the gala, and it's going to be really fun. Um, at the Tokeny Club, and I've just decided the weather's going to be beautiful. 
<laughs> April 28th. So if it's a little chilly tonight, just think in two weeks, it's going to be beautiful. And you're going to want to be there on the seaside. Absolutely. Drinking the yacht drinks and the boat drinks and um, having a great time. And I'm glad you've decided that the weather is going to be. That's, I, a, that's a good uh, positive attitude to, ha to have. Certainly fingers crossed on that. But yeah, the Token Eat Club, obviously just gorgeous as we saw some of the visuals in our promo. But um, what are some of the things people can expect to attend the gala? Okay, so there it's sort of a fun theme. The theme is Yacht Rock and people keep saying, what is Yacht Rock? Yep. And actually Yacht Rock is everything from sort of the Love Boat theme song, yep. yes, the band plays that, to Huey Lewis and the News, which was in the clip, <laughs> to, you know, if you like Pina Colada. Yep. Um, and it's funny because it's a genre now, like it is actually on a seasonal on Sirius SM, but it's also on um, Spotify. So okay. there are people who actually listen to this all day long, and it's kind of like AM gold and one-hit wonders yep. of the 70s and 80s. But it'll be campy and fun. Some people just be casual. It's casual. Some people are going to, you know, do festive yacht attire, you know, ho, yep. ho, ho. And uh, we're going to have tons of great food, a lot of seafood, a raw bar, sushi, lobster sliders, um, tons and tons. We're going to have four or five different really nice food stations. And it's just going to be a fun night, dancing, beautiful views, and sort of a jump start to summer, I guess. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, and obviously, it's hard to believe, as I said, two decades, the Darien Foundation has been around and have done some just great work in the community. Yes, we have. I mean, I'm relatively new, but I knew about the foundation before I came on just because of the sort of breadth and diversity of the things they do. The, the foundation actually started, and some people refer to us as this still as the Darien Tech Foundation, yep. to supply tech to to help put more technology and computers in local grade schools, and that was in 1998. And then in 2007, there were just other projects that came to them and they expanded the mission. So that we've done everything from like the bird sanctuary at the DCA, to the playground by the sound at Weed Beach, to the Pasco Physics Lab, and a lot of technology for the firemen uh, mapping and computer technology for the police, the firemen in Post 53, and also some other kind of big vehicles and things like that. So the, the, the pillar is sort of emergency services, public schools, and community nonprofit organizations. And we also like to look at that as sort of safety, education, and quality sure. of life. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, I know, you, as you mentioned, you're relatively new, the new executive director of the Darien Foundation. And uh, you, as I said, have been in overdrive getting this gala ready ag again for people who would like to attend. How do they do that again? Oh, they can go to darienfoundation.org. And uh, all the information's there. They can either buy the tickets online or just send me in their check or whatever. And, uh, yeah, I've been busy with that, but I've also, we've just given out a couple of new grants. So, you know, it's very exciting. Awesome. Awesome. Sarah Woodbury, the executive director of the Darien Foundation. So great you could be with us yeah, at the half. Thanks for here. having us. It's very exciting to be here. Go no. Blue Wave. All right, and good luck with the gala. And oh, yeah? uh, we're going to think positive about the weather. Bring it, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Sarah. All right. Come sail away with the Darianne Foundation at their 20th year celebration and fundraiser, an evening of Yacht Rock on Saturday, April 28th at 6.30 p.m. at the Token Eat Club. This fabulous gala will feature yacht drinks and a dinner of gourmet food stations. There will also be dancing to America's number one Yacht Rock tribute band, Three Sheets to the Wind. The seaside setting and gorgeous water views at the Token Eat Club make this the perfect way to get a jump on summer. Since 1998, the Darien Foundation has awarded more than $4 million in grants to emergency responders, public schools, and nonprofits in Darien. For more information and to buy tickets to our Evening of Yacht Rock on April 28th, go to DarienFoundation.org.
to meet oh, you. Too crazy to have you guys no, 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 that's, I that's appreciate that. You know, he was great. He's a yeah. very nice guy. Yeah. And, uh, got some Did you say the other day you went out to Mr. Temple? Uh, uh, no, he's good. Uh, uh, he is. 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 Wait, what do we need that for? Oh, oh, it's on, it's in Dropbox. It's in Dropbox. You mean the gala thing? Yeah, it's in Dropbox. Sarah, one of these days we got to connect, talk, like be able to talk like this. Yeah. Welcome back on the DAF Media Network. We are underway in the second quarter, or in the third quarter, rather, second half. Manhasset up 4-3 to three in what has been a really ter terrific high school varsity boys lacrosse game. Logan McGovern with the ball, swings it over to Hudson Picorni. So glad you could be with us on this DAF Media broadcast. Damian Andrew, Jay Robbins, and Frank Coglin as the flag flies. And McGovern nice. finds the back Logan of the cage. And that ties it up at four. So Darianne strikes first in the second half. Want to want to thank uh, Sarah Woodbury, the executive director of the Darien Foundation, for joining us at the half as uh, the Darien Foundation prepares for its upcoming spring gala at the end of the month. The DAF Media Network, of course, a joint venture of the Darien Foundation and the Darien Athletic Foundation, and we have got a good one here from Stadium Field, tied at four early here in the third quarter. And at the face-off X, Tanner Strube and Mark Silos for Manhasset. And that'll be, again, a violation. Yep. And it'll be Darianne possession. Well, Silos is disagreeing with that, but uh, I, I get there, they said he went early, and that's, that's two times in a row. Here's Somi up top. Henry Feifel. Somi. Feifel to Minicus. Nice pass to ah. McGovern, but a stop. And Derek Mulholland picks up the ground ball. Here comes Manhasset in transition. And Frank Coglin, there are a few Mulhollands on this Manhasset team. Yes, they're brothers, Joseph and Aiden, and they are cousins of Grant Petraka, the goalie. So it's a family affair for Manhasset. It certainly is. That was a failure to get it in the box. So it's Darianne possession. There's Minicus. Jack Joyce, the midi, headed to the University of Pennsylvania. Nice move. They're calling him for a ward there, I They believe. call him for a ward, yep. So Darianne turns it over. And Jay possession obviously will be a big factor here as the seconds tick off this clock. Yep. Manassas done a great job of, 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 uh, of putting together a great, nice offense, holding the ball, controlling it, and getting their looks while maintaining possession. It's, it's, not, it's not easy to do. Manhasset in the orange jerseys with the navy blue lettering. Moving from right to left on your screen, Darianne in the home whites. 
with the blue numbers moving from left to right. There's Manhasset attacking. Glenn, far side of the field. Perfetto behind the cage. There's Aiden Mulholland on the run. Shot is wide of the great near post. Should be wipe on, I believe. Certainly Coach Braymeyer thinks it should be white ball as the officials confer. Looks like it. And it's I think it's an alternate possession. Yeah, they, went, they went to the alternate possession uh, to award it to Darianne. And here come the blue wave. Joyce gets it to Tyler Strube, wow. and here's Hudson Picorni. Yeah, Darian is offsides there, so Joyce needs to go and be an extra defender back there. Darian was offsides. So offsides on the blue wave. Manhasset takes over. So there was a flag on the field. Yeah, I was confused as well. So he uh, picks it up. When it's on the offense, when, the, when you have the ball and you're offsides, you, you relinquish uh, uh, possession of the ball. Uh, if that was, if the, we were back on defense and our attackman went over and went offsides and they threw a flag, then that attackman might as well go back and play, play defense. Terrific. Well said. Damian Andrew, Jay Robbins, and Frank Coughlin with you from Stadium Field on the campus of Darien High School on what has become a very windy day in southwestern Connecticut. Chris Meyer with the ball as Manhasset continues to show patience on offense. That's something Manhasset's been doing well is, is doing the big little picking game and Getting the right matchups, getting a short sticks and some of their some of their better players that, that we normally want that Darian normally wants to cover with long poles. Glenn back to Meyer. And Meyer will go to work. And a nice play by Matt Gould, the senior. Just a matter of keeping your stick in the stick in the passing lane. So the interception by uh, Gould. Gould headed to Providence. There's Jack Joyce. Gets it to Picorni on the far side of the field to McGovern as the Blue Waves set up their offense. Here's Feifel up top. Swings it to Joyce. McGovern had the chance to talk with him before the game. He'll play for head coach Mike Pressler at Bryant after his playing days are done here at Darien. High school All-American on attack. Here's Minicus. Picorni. Nice move to the cage, nice. and he puts it in the back of the net. Hudson Picorni scores, and Hudson Picorni, it's been quite a week for him. He uh, named the Warrior U.S. Lacrosse Player of the Week for the Northeast. Had a big game against Torrey Pines, did Hudson Picorni, and he scores a big goal for Darianne as the Blue Wave pull ahead, 5-4, 6-13 remaining in the third quarter. Picorni, I mentioned he had a big game against uh, Torrey Pines, four goals, one assist in that win over the team out of California. And we are back at the faceoff X, Strube, Silos having at it once again. And this will be Darianne possession. I, I believe that should be, uh, I don't know, but that, that seems to be three uh, face-off violations in a row. And that was a, just a 
Yeah, that time he clearly jumped in anticipation of the whistle. That was a miscommunication there on the near side of the field. This yep. is going to be Manhasset possession. Yep, and the way they've been possessing the balls on the ball on offense, it's that's that's one you really want to have back. Frank, this is really the way Coach Cromwell had hoped this would play out. Certainly to this point, they have certainly maintained possession and been very patient on offense. Y yes. Uh, there are so many options for Darien, and to hold them to the score total they have now is, as I, as I indicated, what, what Manhasset had in mind. And they simply need to execute on the offensive zone. Here's Perfetto. Back to Chris Alcarez. Here's Alcaraz. He had a goal in the first half for Manhasset. Under five minutes remaining in the third quarter, five to four, Darianne in front. And the shot is wide as Manhasset scoops it up. Alcaraz. The bounce shot is stopped by Sean Collins. Sean Collins has come up big in a couple of big situations for the Blue Wave. Yes, he has. That was an amazing save. We had two uh, Darien guys that went off of that ground ball, and both of them were, were behind the uh, Manhasset player by about 10 yards. He's bringing it back into, into play. So Darian and their offensive half of the field will go to work. McGovern to Minicus. Here's Somi to Feifel. Under four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Minicus yes. on the run, and the bounce Brian shot Minikis. is good. Brian Minicus picks up the goal, and Darian extends its lead to two goals. Here's another look at that minnow left-handed shot on the move. Finds the back of the net. Pretty play as we take another look. You can see how windy it is out there with our crossbar cam. That was just a great individual play, being able to get topside on his defender and, and, and get his hands free for a shot. And some terrific camera work there by Jackson Leone bringing us... Uh, want to give a shout out by the way to our entire DAF media production crew Ethan Haas, Jackson Leone, Jack Roberson, Camilla Sucre, Emily Finland, Brendan Ross. We have got a cast of thousands here Jay Robbins for this one. That looked like it was stuck in the back of his stick a little bit. Uh, he, he, uh, Silo did have the clamp on there uh, but it seemed like Struve got underneath, lifted his stick up. The ball remained in a stick, and I think the refs will, whenever they see that, they'll, they'll call that as, as withholding the ball. Derry, yes. Darianne in white. Manhasset in orange. Here's McGovern. Jack Joyce to Somi. Trying to get off a shot. Feifel's shot is blocked. And that rolls out of bounds. And it's still, no, no. Well. still Darianne possession. I'm not. Yeah, here's McGovern. Yeah. He pointed in a Manhasset possession. Well, the referee from the referee mi did. midfield did. The referee mid from the midfield changed the call from the referee who was standing next to the ball as it went out of bounds. So that's an interesting call from the midfield referee. And so a little miscommunication. The ref in the corner the actually looked to him for help. Well, it was, it was a tough play. The ball was really high in the air. It was yes. hard to see when it actually went out of bounds. That might have been another, uh, another good spot to use the... Uh, and we would have Manhasset The alternate ball. possession, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
Here's Glenn into the box as Manhasset sets up its offense. 2.46 remaining in the third quarter. We have got a good one here from Stadium Fields in Darien on a windy day. The temperature has dropped from what it was a few hours ago. And a great crowd here. And Frank Manhasset always travels well. So not a surprise to see a lot of uh, orange in the stands. Yes, the community and the parents are very supportive. Uh, this is a critical position, uh, possession for the Indians. Uh, the shot is blocked. And Manhasset resets on offense. Here's Mulholland, number 27, the freshman midi. As I mentioned in the first half, he has verbaled to Michigan. And he did that, Frank, as an eighth grader before they changed the rules on that. Here's Glenn with the ball far side of the field. A minute 30 remaining in the third quarter, 6-4 Darianne. Ground ball, it's scooped up by Collins as the Blue Wave looked to clear. Big a, defensive effort there by Darianne, Jay. That was, a, that was a pretty nice check by the defender, able to dislodge the ball. You don't see that a lot uh, anymore. Here's McGovern. Logan McGovern, the leading scorer. Now we have Minikis on a short stick, which is kind of what... Not what uh, Manasseh would like there. McGovern scoops it up, and it is uh, taken away by Jack Orlando. As Manasseh brings it across midfield. Another key offensive possession here for the Indians. Under 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We are live on the DAF Media Network. So glad you could be with us for this one. Mulholland on the run. Wow, that was very close. Wide of the far post, just wide of just the far wide. post. We had a really good angle on that. He's being overplayed to his right side, and he was offered an alley on the left, and he certainly took it. He did, and got off a quick shot. Here's Mulholland again. Nice move. Holland coming out of the roll dodge, showing his versatility as to how he can bring it to the cage. Being hounded by Connor Olson, the senior defenseman for Darien. And the sh bounce shot Lewis is Perfetto. good by Louis Perfetto. The junior attack cuts the Darien lead to 6-5 with .6 seconds remaining in the third quarter. He just beat him to the 5x5 five five and uh, was able to, to pivot and get a great shot off. And I am told, Frank Coughlin, that Louis Perfetto, pretty good basketball player at yes. Manhasset as well. Yes, he, that's, that's right. And, and the skills developed uh, on the hardwood are, are evident here uh, on the lacrosse field. Uh, his change of hands on that one. In fact, that was a little bit of a jump shot uh, to be able to extend over the defender when he came out of the roll dodge. Great job. Brendan Ross on the instant replay. Emily Finland directing here. 0.6 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 6-5 Darian as Perfetto cuts into that blue wave lead. What an entertaining high school varsity boys lacrosse game the, this afternoon from Darian as time runs out on the third quarter. Blue wave up 6-5. Well, gentlemen, it's been a good one. Yeah, like I said, when anytime you have two teams playing from across the pond, uh, you know, uh, Manhasset for you know Long Island, Darien for Connecticut, uh, you know, you can really take the records and throw them out the window. Absolutely, yeah. both both sides are going to bring it, and uh, you know, both programs have the ability to, to have wonderful, wonderful games and, and disrupt the other. I agree. The, a game like this brings a lot of emotion and intensity, and Manhasset has lost a, a few. Uh, one goal games already this year to the tough opponents, Cold Spring Harbor and Massapequa. And uh, it'll be interesting to see whether that goal at the end of the third quarter will drive some momentum 
for the Indians, but so much of it will turn on how the face-off will go. You mentioned Cold Spring Harbor and uh, Massapequa, close games, and two, again, traditional powers out on the island. Yes, Manhasset is, their non-conference schedule included the defending Class A and Class C enrollment champs. Uh, together, as I mentioned, uh, Chaminade and St. Anthony's, and they play Garden City, the Class B Nassau County defending champ. Uh, in during the regular season as part of conference play. Uh, the Chaminade game is the Regs Rock Lacrosse Day of Heroes uh, that's at Manhasset this year on the first Saturday of May, another contest that's a lot of emotion and intensity in honor of Sergeant James J. Regan, uh, a Manhasset uh, native who played for Chaminade and was killed in Iraq. And it is a, uh, a terrific uh, game in, in, in his honor. And it is windy out there, as you can see the flag, you can see the jerseys. It's howling. You see the players uh, Absolutely. In, in, in shorts and t-shirts when it was 70 degrees out at the beginning, you know, earlier today, are now getting a little chilly. So here we go, Strube and Silos at the face-off X. And Silos wins possession. And he is on the move. Gets off the shot. Crease violation on Silos. His yep. momentum carried him in. Yep. Another good look, however, off of the face. Yeah. A lot of times facing off when you're in there and you're really pushing and grinding against another guy, your stick can get a little deformed. And uh, when you run it down and take it, take the you know try to throw it for the first time, it can, sometimes it does go into the dirt like that. I want to apologize once again for not having a clock for you. We will update the time as this fourth quarter proceeds 6-5 Darianne right now 11:25 remaining in regulation and here is Blake Somi nice move Bacorny swings it to Logan McGovern out to Minicus on the far side of the field actually that's Feifel Feifel on the run gets off a left-handed shot and it's going to stay with Darianne A great crowd here from Stadium Field. Mm, pass is a little low. And Blue Wave turn it over as Manhasset looks to clear. Trail check there by the short stick D Mitty on the denying the entry pass. Yeah, it was just enough to make it a, a low pass and hard, hard to catch. Ball's on the ground, and it's scooped up on the far side of the field, out to Glenn, over to Mulholland. They have too many players in the field. And or offsides, actually. And that'll be offsides on Manhasset, Darianne possession. And here comes the blue wave. And they're offsides there as well. So he should probably go. Well, yeah, they threw the flag. So number eight should probably go and play defense right now for Manhasset because he's already off sides. Might as well go and get an extra defender back there. But. So the flag down, off sides. 10-12 remaining in regulation. 6-5 Darianne. So every possession they, they called now. it on 32, but I, I believe it was on number eight, number eight who went over, actually. Every possession now crucial for both teams. One goal game. There's McGovern up top now over to Minicus. Back to McGovern. The shot, the stop by Petraka. Scooped up by Feifel. And Darianne will reset. The shot by Jackson no Peters. And that is Manhasset ball. That'll be Manhasset ball as I think Joyce was hit with Joyce the shot. Joyce was hit with the shot. Gets up gingerly as he uh, heads to the sideline. Excellent job by the man down defense of Manhasset. 
staying in position, staying in lane, and talking. Uh, a lot of communication uh, while the ball moved. Here comes Manhasset across midfield. As uh, that clear was by number 17, James Amarasana, uh, who together uh, with Arnold and Logan Hyde and Graham Petraka are captains of the Manassas team. Amarasana is going to play for Marquette. And Manhasset turns it over as Matt Gould Andrew scoops it up. Darby. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew Darby. Darby, the senior defenseman, is committed to Michigan. And we've got a timeout as head coach uh, Jeff Braymeyer of Darien wants to talk things over with his team. 840 remaining in regulation, 6-5, Darien clinging to a one-goal lead. Damian Andrew, Jay Robbins, Frank Coughlin joining you on the DAF Media Network this afternoon. And I want to give a shout out to our entire DAF Media production crew doing a terrific job tonight. Emily Finland, Brendan Ross, Jack Roberson. And we are going to take a quick break. We will reset and be right back. We are back on the DAF Media Network, and here is the situation. 8.40 remaining in regulation, Darianne up 6-5 to five in what has been a really terrific high school varsity boys lacrosse game tonight from Stadium Field on the Darianne High School campus. You just saw our DAF Media promo, some of the students and People involved in what we have been doing here the last several months since September, over 91 broadcasts, and so glad you could be with us on this one. And here's Blake Somi with the ball. As the Blue Wave go to work on offense, McGovern behind the cage. Swings it over to Minicus, out to Jackson Peters. Here's Joyce, seems to be okay after getting hit with that shot before the timeout. Somi. Somi, of course, a terrific soccer player for the Blue Wave in the fall. Minicus looking to find a seam in that Manhasset defense. Out to Peters, the shot, uh, and a more. nice stop by Petraka. Grant had that all the way. He went low to get that one. Strong effort by the Manhasset defense. Both goalies have played really well between yeah. the pipes in this one. Grant Petraka and of course Sean Collins. As Frank just mentioned, that was a wonderful defensive stand by, by Manhasset. They were they were doubling and recovering quickly and uh, it was, you know, that's it's tough to beat when a defense is working like that. And Darian scoops it up. Matt Gould gets it to Hudson Picorni. Here's Logan McGovern. Out to Minicus. Great save. Another Again, big Grant save. Grant had it all the way. Terrific clear. Sticks down on the ground. So we've got a ground ball. Oh, that should be, uh, I don't know. Perfetto scoops it up, and that'll be a uh, timeout. Manhasset. Manhasset is Keith Cromwell. 
makes the quick call there. Normally when a guy loses a stick and then is, is still in, involved when around the ball and, and, and uh, you know, they, they'll, they'll normally call uh, interference on that, but I guess they felt he wasn't in the way there. Frank, I was talking about Coach Cromwell in the first half. He was the 2001 Rookie of the Year in the MLL, drafted by the Bridgeport Barrage. Remember the Bridgeport Barrage, now defunct. I do, <laughs> down I in do. Philadelphia. I, but, uh, I wanted Coach to see a Cromwell. lot more games than, than, I, than I did because uh, a lot of the games were Friday evenings, about 7.30 at night yeah. in Bridgeport, and it's you know, just tough to get up there from Fairfield County. They played at the uh, Harbor Yard complex yep. there, yep. and then they moved after a couple seasons down to Philadelphia. Cromwell also was an assistant on the back-to-back -back state champions that Manhasset had in 2009 and 2010. And uh, he, has, he has that history. And uh, again, he, he really has no, no gap as to lacrosse knowledge and understanding of, of what needs to be done. So it was a, a fortunate choice for Manhasset to be able to under seven minutes remaining in the game. Get him to take the helm. Two of the uh, really storied programs, high school varsity boys lacrosse programs in the tri-state area, having at it this afternoon here at Stadium Field. 6.49 left in regulation. Darianne up a goal, 6-5, to five in what has been a real treat of a game. And here we go. Coming out of the timeout, Manhasset goes to work on offense. Glenn with the ball, swings it to Mulholland. And Glenn scoops it up. Chris Meyer gets it to Perfetto. Perfetto, Frank, has played well tonight here for Manhasset. Yes, he has against a, a very good defenseman. Uh, and he just needs to continue to protect his stick as he carries the ball. Chris Meyer. And a nice defensive play by Matt Gould. Yeah, again, getting your stick in the passing lane, but off well, or not. So the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Manhasset possession. Here's Perfetto behind the cage as Manhasset looks to set something up here on offense. The, two, the two-man game of Chris Glenn and Aiden Mahalan will have to be where Manhasset would go here unless Louis Perfetto is able to create something. There's Peter Lapina going to work on Jack Joyce to Glenn. Glenn behind the cage. Alcaraz looking for a seam. Gets it out to Mulholland. Over to Lapina. Six on six here. Lapina defended by Joyce. Mulholland. Shot okay. clock is on. And here's Perfetto as the uh, shot clock now is. And Hassett will need to get a shot here in the next 30 seconds. Actually, it's less than that now, right? Yes. <laughs> Hassett has to, to keep the ball in the box. By virtue of the stolen one. And, and they stepped out of the box. So here's Darianne, under four minutes remaining in the game.
McGovern. Nice move. Resets. Gets it out to Peters. There's Henry Feifel on the far side of the field. Jay, we've got 3.20 remaining. Darian with a 6-5 lead. What are you looking to do here if you're the Blue Wave? Uh, I think you'd be very deliberate in your when, how you run this offense. Um, not like that. Um, balls, balls on the ground. Scrum in front of the cage. That's a fortunate call for Darian. Not sure what was called. It was a loose ball push against Manhasset as part of the scrum. Here goes Darianne McGovern. McGovern being hounded by Jack Orlando. And I think it's a great matchup here for Darian. Here's Minicus. Minicus he headed. Uh, put his hand in the crease. Fell into the crease and. Sometimes you fake yourself out. Yep. Darian turns it over. Brian Minicus, though, terrific player, headed to Colgate. Manhasset gets it across midfield, and they'll go to work here on offense. Logan Hyde. Dumps it to Alcaraz. Here's Glenn. Manhasset pulls it out. There's your two-man game, Frank, that you were talking about moments ago. Glenn and Mulholland. Gwen Mulholland and Lewis Profetto are the ones that generally are able to create separation for shot making. Balls on the ground, scooped back up. Timeout. By Profetto, and that'll be a timeout Time called out. by Manhasset head coach Keith Cromwell. In the game. It's a very heads up timeout. You just heard the Darian public address announcer Anthony Sweeney who does a terrific job a minute 16 remaining in regulation Darianne clinging to a one goal lead and this has been a terrific lacrosse game tonight from Stadium Field and you can see the stands are pretty full and everybody has a sweatshirt on as I said earlier the temperature has dropped from what it was this afternoon just a Beautiful day this afternoon here in southwestern Connecticut. Supposed to get some weather tomorrow, and then hopefully that'll be it. Yes. <laughs> and hopefully it's smooth sailing as we take a look at the Darianne huddle. And there's the Manhasset huddle as Keith Cromwell talking things over with his team. Once again, thanks so much for joining us on this DAF Media broadcast, the Dar DAF Media Network, a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. And so here we go, a minute 16 remaining in regulation. If you want excitement, it doesn't get any better than Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Right? You took the words out of my mouth, Jay Robbins. Sure that Coach Cromwell will come out of the huddle with a design play, with a set play, possibly setting up one of the, the three players we referenced before, or maybe uh, looking to do something that Darianne doesn't expect. Darianne with a nation best winning streak of 58 games. And they have a one goal lead here late against Manhasset. One of their really long-time out-of-state rivals. There's Perfetto. Nice move. And nice. he scores to tie it 
at six as the Manhasset sideline erupts. Louis Perfetto came back to his right hand, his really his off hand, his weak hand, in order to make that inside roll work. He was able to get up underneath him and uh, had his back to the defender, and the defender pushed him from the back. And he scores, falling down. And this has been a terrific game. 59.6 seconds remaining, 6-6. Six to six. As a face-off guy, this is, it doesn't get bigger than this. Nice wingman are Timmy Barrett and Chris Glenn for Silos. And for Darianne. Jack Joyce and Henry Feifel. Oh. And Strube wins possession. The shot oh. is in, a big time shot. He goes low, Brian does Brian Minicus, and Minicus dials it up seven, as seven. Darianne, regains Darianne regains the lead, the lead. seven to six. Uh, seconds tick three. off the clock, 52.7 seconds remaining as the Blue Wave go back up a goal, a big time shot by Brian Minicus. And you said it, Jay Robbins, you and Frank, face off so key in that situation here's Strube and Silos again at the face off X great shot right there guys mm. nice look Jack Roberson and they are having at it yes they are man this is fun to watch I believe that was a push, Frank. Yes. Yeah. Here's uh, Joyce with the ball on the far side of the field. Under 30 seconds remaining, 7 to 6. Darianne gets doubled by the goal. Running. And they threw a flag on there. Manhasset. And that'll be a flag on Manhasset. So a man-up situation here for the Blue Wave with 17.6 seconds remaining. 7-6, to six, Darian in front. Here's Minicus. As we are back live, Minicus. That was one heck of a check. Patrick Arnold. Wow. Edward Arnold, excuse me, with a terrific check. He was put on... Away from McGovern in order for the Manhasset team to get the ball. And here's Manhasset as they try to get off a shot. Mulholland. Oh, wow. You got it. And here's Perfetto. No. No goal. And Darianne stuns wow. the field as they head Great to Great opportunity Sean for Collins. the Indians at the, at the end there. They never gave up. And this is the sort of game that will really help them in the conference play. That was wonderful. That's a, you know, that's a great game by a young team coming in there and staying in there like that. That's, that, was, that was a wonderful game right in until the end. And as you said, Frank, obviously uh, the schedule certainly doesn't get any easier for <laughs> Manhasset, but this is a uh, kind of a building block situation for them as they can learn from them. I know they've had a couple of tough losses this season. Sim similar to this. Yep. In, in, uh, Really a, a mid-single-digit game and close games that they lost to Massapequa and Cold Spring Harbor by a goal. And uh, I guess the Manhasset team would say that we don't need any more lessons. <laughs> right, <laughs> but, right, right. But they... <coughs> well, this was everything we wanted and more in terms of just a pure lacrosse game between two storied rivals mm -hmm. here in Darien. And can't thank both of you enough for uh, hopping on the broadcast. Uh, Frank Coughlin, your final thoughts here from Darianne. This is the best team I've seen Manhasset play all year, and I think that it is, I mean, they took them down the wire. They had a chance to tie it in regulation, and they should hold their heads high. And as we head back to the island, uh, they have uh, nothing to be ashamed of, and 
Uh, the season is still ahead of them, and I think that it bodes well. This sort of this sort of effort uh, is indicative of what they can do because this is a powerful team that, that they took up took against uh, in in today's game. And they, and they took them down to the wire. They didn't they didn't let them get you know do do a lot of stuff they wanted to do. Um, Darian you know didn't, didn't play the, one of the, their cleanest game all season, and that's due to the effort that Manhasset put in. Um, and like I said. Their defense played really well, sliding very quickly, recovering very quickly. Um, they were tough all over the field on offense. They possessed the ball probably longer than Darianne did. Um, they got a lot of good shots, were able to maintain possession in a lot of those shots. So it was, it was, a, it was a great game by, by them. Yeah, great lacrosse game by both teams. Can't thank you, gentlemen, enough for uh, being here this afternoon. Frank Coglin and Jay Robbins. And I want to give a quick shout-out to our entire DAF Media production crew. Did a great job with our instant replay, with our camera angles. Emily Finlan on camera one for most of the second half. Jackson Leone, Jack Roberson directing. Brendan Ross on instant replay. Camilla Sucre on camera one in the first half. Did yeah. I leave anybody out? Ethan Haas. Well, I don't mean to interrupt, Bruce but I, I, I've been told that tomorrow is a special day for you, uh, Damien. So I wanted to say ha happy birthday. It, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Yeah, the big, uh, the big four or five. So uh, I'll enjoy the day tomorrow. But I can't thank uh, all of you enough for a terrific job on this broadcast. Frank, nice to meet you. Nice. To meet you. Thank you. We got we got one last look at that uh, goal that, by not, that no goal no goal okay no goal here's the last shot here by Manhasset Perfetto so close as they were able to get it downfield as you see uh, Coach Braymeyer and Coach Cromwell shaking hands yeah, uh, a lot near of respect midfield. There. A lot of respect. Uh, Coach Cromwell has a lot of respect for Coach Braymeyer. Wanted to keep this rivalry going when he took the head coaching job at Manhasset. But uh, it's been a great afternoon and uh, that'll do it here from Stadium Field as Darianne holds on or comes back, I should say, to beat Manhasset 7-6 to six as the Blue Wave improve to 5-0. and oh. But for our entire DAF Media production crew, Frank Coughlin, Jay Robbins, I am Damian Andrew. Have a great night, everybody. Come sail away with the Darianne Foundation at their 20th year celebration and fundraiser, an evening of Yacht Rock on Saturday, April 28th at 6.30 p.m. at the Tokeny Club. This fabulous gala will feature yacht drinks and a dinner of gourmet food stations. There will also be dancing to America's number one Yacht Rock tribute band, Three Sheets to the Wind. The seaside setting and gorgeous water views at the Tokeny Club make this the perfect way to get a jump on summer. Since 1998, the Darianne Foundation has awarded more than $4 million in grants to emergency responders, public schools, and nonprofits in Darianne. For more information and to buy tickets to our Evening of Yacht Rock on April 28th, go to DarianneFoundation.org.